Call to order. This is the 21st regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. The ultimate measure of leaders is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren. Excused. Boak. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Excused. Hannah. Excused. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Percy. Here. And Wangeman. Here. 13 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can join Alderman Raisler in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Corey. Looking for approval of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the last Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If there is no discussion, all in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have uh, no resignations or appointments or confirmation of appointments this evening. If I can call forward a young man named Mr. Malik Mohammed. Please come forward. This young man is, uh, his name is Malik Mohammed. I don't know if uh, any of you are familiar with him. Malik is a sixth grader at Horace Mann Middle School. Um, he is also on the high honor roll. He plays in Sheboygan Youth Football, plays on a traveling basketball team, plays on a traveling soccer team. Um, he also is the NFL punt, pass, and kick national champion for the 10 and 11 year old categories. <laughs> So I'd like to uh, read a proclamation. I like giving these things. This is a, from the office of the mayor of the city of Sheboygan. This is a proclamation. Whereas Malik Muhammad entered a local NFL punt, pass, and kick competition at Kiwanis Park. And after winning two local competitions, on December 5th, Malik headed to Green Bay to compete for the Packers team championship at the Don Hudson Center. And at the December 5th event, where he competed against a field of 300, Malik finished first in his age bracket, the 10 to 11 year old age bracket, for the team competition. And whereas, Malik then advanced to the national finals, held at the Georgia Dome, before the Green Bay Packers, Atlanta Falcons, began the NFC Divisional Championship game. This is how I came to notice Malik was when I saw him at halftime receiving this award. And Malik Muhammad of Sheboygan won the national championship of the NFL's punt, pass, and kick competition on Saturday, January 15th at the Georgia Dome. His scores were punt 66.4, pass 129.9, and kick 107 for a total of 303, which gave him first place nationally in his age bracket. Now therefore, I, Bob Ryan, by virtue of the authority vested in me, as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim today, February 8th, 2011, as Malik Muhammad Day in the city of Sheboygan. <laughs> Malik is a fine example of the youth of Sheboygan and their potential. I was looking for anything that I could find wrong with this young man, <laughs> and I couldn't find anything anywhere. He's an exemplary student, an exemplary athlete, 
and a heck of a good guy, about the only thing I could find that may infringe upon his future success is that he doesn't like to eat in front of girls for some reason. But <laughs> other than that, I think he's destined for greatness. Thank you very much, Malik. <laughs> thank you again, and, and, and thank you. That's great. You're totally embarrassed. <laughs> okay, moving on to public forum. Yes, this evening we have just one person, uh, Milt Storm. If you'd like to come up to the mic. Thanks. Mel, can I have your home address, please? Yes, my home address is 1736 Marvin Court. Thank you. And you will have five minutes, sir. There are two issues that I would I want to thank you first for allowing me to come here. There are two issues that I would like to address this evening. One is the vision and the mission of the Wellness Committee, and if time permitting, the, my favorite topic is uh, my property tax payments, especially for education. Last week as I was at the city clerk's office, I recognized a gentleman having a con conversation with the assistant city attorney. And from my knowledge of him, I know that this gentleman, when he speaks, he is not for lacking of words. So I sat down in a comfortable chair in the hallway, and then I noticed that there was some white literature that was available. Oh, I can find it. Well, it was the Mission Committee, or, or the Wellness Committee is what it was. Come on, misplaced it, wherever it was. Well, anyway, I'll find it. Here it is. With my age, you know, memory is kind of slow. This is the vision statement and the mission statement of the Wellness Committee. Now, the vision of the Wellness Committee has uh, five agendas, but I'm only going to touch on two of them. The first one was the second one is to become a leader in a well city initiative. I always envisioned that Sheboygan was the Sin City, or is that Phoenix, Arizona? And the other one is the last one, is to establish a wellness first decision in, in the process that is embedded in all city de decisions. Wow, I can just envision how the aldermen on our council are going to really improve the vision and the wellness of this community. I'm sorry, I apologize for my sense of humor, but sometimes I get carried away. Now the mission statement, that's a real one. In fact, it improves the frosting on your cake because, because it uh, has some very good knowledge. I'd just like to read it, and I was kind of amused of it. The mission of the Wellness Committee is to promote an effective and proactive wellness program that fosters long health and drives changes in the, the lifestyles of our family of city workers and dependents. Well, I find that quite interesting because I find that a lot of the lawyer politicians in Washington, D.C., and also the lawyer politicians we in, have in Madison, they really know how to screw up a government initiative. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm all for the Wellness Committee. But I am also in favor of improving the lifestyle of our citizens of our communities too. Now on to the tax issue, which is always seems to be a hot topic. Last week I paid my first half installment of my property tax, and I've owned my home for 45 years and paid the property taxes. Sometimes when I uh, have the county treasurer mark my tax bill, paid in protest and have it marked in yellow. I'm not protesting that my taxes are too high. I'm, I'm just amused or, or irritated at the misuse of my public tax dollars initiated by usually the school board and, and their administrators and some of the teachers union. 
My 2009 property tax contribution to education increased 12.2%, and my uh, 2010 property taxes now increased to 7.4%, which is almost a 20% increase in two years, and I haven't had a raise in Social Security for two years. So how am I supposed to pay for that? The market value of my home has now decreased $25,000 from about $150,000 down to $121,000. Well, I thank you for listening to me and hope that I haven't been too well informed, but I'm certainly trying to hopefully improve the wellness of my spirit and my soul before I do expire. Thank you, Milt. Thank you, Milt. That's it. That is all for public forum this evening. <clears throat> uh, mayor's announcements, we will have none this evening. So we will move right on to public hearings. We have two public hearings this evening. Number one is a public hearing for the proposed assessment for repaving of South 18th Street from Washington Avenue to the south line of Fox Hill Road. And to run concurrently, the second public hearing is for the proposed assessment for the resurfacing of North Avenue from North 10th Street to North 15th Street. Is there anyone that would like to be heard in the first public hearing, which is regarding South 18th Street? If you, if you would like to be heard, please raise your hand now. Yes, sir. Please step up. And can I have your name and address, please? Gary Messick. My address is 1825 North 5th Street. North 5th? North 5th. Go ahead. Uh, my parents are Garrett and Gloria Mexic. They live on the corner of 18th and Washington. South 18th Street isn't the only thing that needs to be repaired. The city's special assessment tax design is in dire need of repair. I challenge this council to make the changes that are needed to reform this uneven tax. Taxes should be grounded in fairness with a dose of ability to pay. The city's special assessment tax does neither. Why isn't it fair? How many citizens have had special tax assessments? If it's a fair design, it would rotate and would affect all citizens evenly. But that's not the case. Some roads last 100 years, some last 40 years, and if you have a poorly constructed one like 18th Street, it only lasts 31 years. But rather than having this large burden of added surtax to all the citizens over, equally over time, it's a haphazard system. If by chance you live on a street that's in disrepair, you have that added burden. If you happen to live on a cul-de-sac or in a, in a subdivision that has little traffic, you'll never see a special assessment. However, if you live on the corner of 18th and Washington, like my parents, you've had three of them. It's not, and that's exactly the problem. It's not fair that some citizens don't have any special tax. Some have one, some have two, and the unfortunate ones have three. Furthermore, there's no element of ability to pay in that system. The tax isn't based on your income. It's not based on your property value. In fact, I would assert that it is a negative, an inverse ability to pay factor. After all, who ends up living on the cul-de-sacs and the residential areas that do not get much traffic? And compare that to who lives on the, uh, the well-traveled streets and the truck routes. The monies that we're talking about are not inconsequential. My folks are getting a bill for $8,600 plus dollars. That's a heck of an extra tax burden on top of your own property taxes, especially when you consider this is the third time they've gotten it for the same property. And when you've, and you also have to consider that many of the people that are doing this are like my parents who are, who have a uh, social security is their primary source of income. And now they have this extra surtax of another $8,600. 
This is an inequitable system that needs an overhaul, and I challenge this council to make changes so that it would be a fair system for all. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Is there anybody else with, that would like to be heard? Sir? Can I have your name and home address, please? Sure. My name is Jim Lampe, and I live at 1807 Washington Avenue. And Lampe, L-A-M-P-E? L-A-M-P-E. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Uh, this is more or less a uh, follow-up of where Gary left off. Uh, matter of fact, we live across the street from the Messex. Um, we're, we're in that same position where our home faces our Washington Avenue. So our main taxes come from Washington Avenue. But being on the corner, we get taxed twice. So we are, we are, are, are taxed. Our main tax comes from the, the main road. Then we have our side road. And when, when you look at the corner lots, uh, uh, it, our lot is narrow and we have no, there is no use for us to have the road there in the beginning. If, if we had our way, um, when the road was proposed, we were even fought for the road not to go through because it does us, there, there is, there's nothing there to gain from us. Uh, the water, the, the piping, the street all go uh, to other places. So as, as Gary uh, Messick said, it's, it's not a fair um, assessment of the different pr pieces of property as you go down the street, depending upon where, where you live, on the cul-de-sacs, on the corners, um, you get um, uh, assessed differently. And, and it, should, it, it, sh it should be a fair assessment to look at what your property is and what you can put on the property or, or not put on the property and where it is. And so I'm going to keep it brief, but it's a shame that the road didn't last. Uh, we have the main street in front of our house, Washington Avenue. The trucks pound that street every day. The kids go to South High. That road is holding up fairly well. When it comes to 18th Street, it failed. And, and so it's, it's so unfair to the taxpayers in that area that for, what is, for, for whatever reason, that that concrete did not hold up we are being told that we're going to have to pay for that street all over again. And I, I really think that's unfair. Now, the other thing that I was going to mention on this street, which I don't know if the aldermen know this, know, know this but I talked to the engineer in charge of the design and he said, we're going to narrow that street. And I said, you're going to narrow the street? And he said, yes, we're going to narrow that street. And I said, 18th Street is one of the highly traveled streets on the south side of Sheboygan. And they said, well, we want to slow the traffic down, so we're going to narrow the street. But then, has anybody thought our two fire stations are on that street. Now you look and go down that street and you will find out that with the snowstorm we have and there are a lot of cars that park on that street and now we're narrowing that street, 
we should take a real close look at that through the fire department, through other cities, and find out, is that what we want to do? Narrow that street? I question that because I, I just see that used an awful lot. And that's basically all I have to say. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Is there anybody else that would like to be heard in this public hearing, ma'am? <clears throat> and can I get your name and home address? I'm Gloria Messick, and um, my husband and I live on 1723 Washington Avenue. And um, I thought there'd be a lot more people here from the 18th Street. I'm, I'm very surprised that there aren't. But um, I'd, I'd like to, I, I would like for each of you here tonight to try to put yourself in my place. I assume most of you live in Sheboygan and that streets that you live on are perhaps 20, 30, maybe 40 years old, maybe even 100. If you had your home built, you paid for the street in front of it. If you purchased a ready-built home, you paid for the street when you purchased your lot. How would you feel if someone came and told you that your street was no longer adequate and had to be replaced, and you would have to pay thousands of dollars for that? Not resurfaced, which would cost far less, but replaced. Never mind that the concrete near your home does not seem to be a problem or that you had no complaint. You will get new curbs, new concrete, new everything. The street will be designed to be narrower, so you'll have a little more room between the sidewalk and the curb. Of course, you'll have to do a little landscape, add a little grass and so forth. It isn't our problem if you want these changes. You are told the city has police power under the Wisconsin statutes to levy special assessments upon your property. Most people would say that if that's the law, the city should exercise it. Well, we feel the law does not apply in this instance. South 18th Street is only 31 years old, and it was guaranteed by city ordinance to last for at least 40 years. Um, according to a Sheboygan Press article dated 1-10-11, the Sheboygan Deputy Public Works Director stated, the pavement on 18th Street failed prematurely. When people involved pointed out that we were guaranteed that the street would last for 40 years and many complaints were registered by the people in area, our area, we were given a warranty discount credit based on the nine le years left of the guarantee. Webster's Dictionary says that a guarantee is an assurance of the quality of or the length of use to be expected from a product. Since we were given a warranty discount on our assessments, is, <laughs> is that not an acknowledgement that the guarantee of quality of and length of use was not met and the street did not live up to what was promised to us? The city officials signed the contract in 1979. Adjacent homeowners were assessed for their share of the cost and they merely paid what was assessed them. It was the responsibility of the city officials at that time to oversee the project and to assure that things were done properly. The people serving and working for the city were sure enough of the street's construction <coughs> that they gave the property owners a 40-year guarantee. Why are we, the property owners who were given that guarantee, expected to share expenses for the mistakes or assumptions that were made by our city leaders in 1979. Please think about what I've said and ask yourself how you would feel if you were in my place. It's my hope that you will realize that the decisions that have been made should be reviewed. And then I have another area of contention for this uh, in the same um, category. We own the home located on the corner lot of Washington Avenue and 18th Street. The front of our home and our driveway face Washington Avenue, and all utilities come into our home from Washington Avenue. South 18th Street is the abutting street, and in a, for us, is not necessary in any way. It, it doesn't 
benefit us because our driveway goes out on Washington. All our utilities come from Washington Avenue. The city has recognized that the second side of a corner lot is a problem for all those who own corner lots, and they routinely give a, up to a 120-foot exemption when one has already paid for all of the expenses for its frontage lot. Well, we are told that since is the third paving for our home, and we were given the customary 30 feet, which was customary in 1979, we will not be eligible for any discount on this third paving. Again, this is a replacement paving. It isn't, it isn't the first time it's been done. And for a street that, we, that did not live up to its guarantee, we feel we should be given the deduction that is now standard. And would you, real, would you just consider this inequity? I thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Mrs. Messick. Would anybody else like to be heard regarding this matter? Would anybody else like to be heard regarding this matter? And as is customary for the third time, would anybody else like to be heard in this public hearing? President Kittleson? I'd move then, Mayor, that the hearings be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. Is there any discussion? There is none. All in favor of clo closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. The hearings are closed. Thank you, everybody, for speaking. Consent agenda 21-1 through 21-24. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that all RCs be accepted and adopted. All ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all ordinances and resolutions be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda, 21-1 through 21-24, under discussion. If there is no discussion on the consent agenda, roll call, please. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wongman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 21-25 to be referred. Reports of officers 2, 2126 through 2136 to be referred. Resolutions introduce 3, 2137 by Alder Persons, Hannah Kittleson, Raisler, and Versi, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire an environmental engineer in the Department of Public Works. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to put the resolution 21-37 uh, upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, we have... Alderman Versi. Thank you. Just, just a note to everyone else that this was in the budget. So that was one key item we talked about with the, these next three items. All three of these that we're lifting hiring for, hiring freeze for were in the budget. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Do we have any further discussion on 2137? Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question. Is this exempt or non-exempt? Or, uh, sorry, represented or non-represented? It's non it's non, non rep. Thank you. Right. And as a non-represented position, as we know, Alderman Bauck, they will be coming in paying 50% of their retirement. Any further discussion? If there is none on 2137, roll call, please. Bauck? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangerman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2138 by Alder Persons, Hannah Kittleson, Raisler, and Versi, lifting the hiring freeze in order to recall laid off employees to budgeted positions as they become vacant during 2011 in the Department of Public Works. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I make the motion to put resolution 21 38 upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put 2138 upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, as, just as it says, we'll be recalling people who have, 
previously worked in the uh, uh, Public Works Department to come back as, for emergency uh, situations or when jobs become available. Thank you, President Kittleson. Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I just want to make sure I understood what uh, President Kittleson just said. Uh, so are these for emergency purposes, or as soon as there are vacancies due to retirements, these members will be coming as back? As soon as there are right. vacancies, available, uh, okay. vacancies available. And that we didn't make, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. And there were no conversations. We weren't successful in negotiating any of those people to come back, contributing to their retirement or, or, or more uh, of no, their No, these, these are represented employees. Employees that, and we... Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the the advantage to um, as we as we do have some retirements and we do have some coming up, uh, as we can recall uh, for these budgeted positions, they are in the budget. The laid off employees, when we exercise that list of laid off employees, then um, by contract we can hire part time summer help, which we couldn't do last summer. And the idea is if we can get enough retirements and exercise that list of laid off employees that we can again bring back part-time summer help uh, without the benefit package and the and the the higher salaries okay thank you mr mayor i'll be voting no on this just because uh of the intransigence of the represented groups uh when it came time to budget time a few months ago so i'm gonna i urge my colleagues to vote no on this as well thank we'll, you alderman we'll, 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 not, we'll not bring them back and then we'll have that conversation then about how we can bring them back more affordably the way the Kohler company has and the way that uh, Harley Davidson has in the way that Mercury Marine has. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Any further discussion? If there is none, on 2138, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Bauk? No. 12 eyes, one no. Motion carries. 2139 by Alder Persons, Hannah Kittleson, Raisler, and Versi, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a part time cemetery supervisor slash administrative assistant in the Department of Public Works. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to put resolution 21 39 upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. And under discussion, I believe this is just a, a position, again, that's in the budget. Uh, it's, it has been vacant for a while. I believe the person uh, left the position, and now they're just trying, they want to hire somebody. Again, in this very important uh, cemetery supervisor, administrative assistant position, part-time. Thank you, President Thank Kittleson. You. Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to confirm, is this a Schedule X employee that can't go more than 600 hours and will never be entitled to benefits? Uh, no, I don't believe it's Schedule X. Uh, Director of Public Works, Bill Bittner, will come up. This, this is not a Schedule X employee. This is a uh, regular, non-represented, a supervisory position. When we created it a few years ago, we did something unique. We started saying our regular employees don't necessarily have to be full-time people, uh, but it is, a, it is a regular position with the city. But to get ahead, it's not represented, so it will have the 50% uh, retirement uh, payment. Just to follow up, Mr. Mayor, and Resolve just to confirm, up. the person that was in this job recently, will this person have those same kind of responsibilities where they're kind of the marketing of it and the, yes. the, the selling of it? And so it's that same role? Yes. Just it's, only It's replacing that, the position we created a couple okay. years ago. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Thank you, Alderman Bob. Thank you, Bill. Any further discussion on 2139? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cut. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Bulk. Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2140 by Alderpersons Hannah Kittleson, Raisler, and Versi lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a chemist, industrial wastewater supervisor in the Department of Public Works. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd ask to put uh, resolution 21 40 upon its passage, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Under discussion, it's, as, as you said, a chemist, industrial wastewater supervisor in the Department of Public Works. 
Thank you, Alderperson mm -hmm. Kittleson, President Kittleson. Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Cut. Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 21 41 and 24 21 42 lie over. 21 43 to be referred. Report of Committee 7 21 44 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 8932 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations, and public safety concerns. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Thank you. Is uh, Clifford Ehrenreich here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ehrenreich revealed um, an 07 disorderly conduct and an 09 uh, speeding. Uh, the disorderly conduct actually happened in 08, and the speeding was also in 08. Um, he did not list several items, including Another 08 disorderly conduct, a speeding in 08, bail jumping in 09, theft in 2010, speeding in 2010, and defective signal in 2010. Um, is the committee's recommendation based on the history of, uh, of uh, convictions? Um, he did cooperate by, atten by attending the meeting, but generally he's been fine to be uncooperative with the police uh, when he does get in trouble uh, and didn't really take responsibility for his own actions. Uh, he was blaming other people. Uh, and so we felt strongly as a committee that um, it was in our best interest of public safety to deny a taxi cab operator's license. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Kittleson. Under discussion. <laughs> Wind flesh. Wind flesh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the Vice President right for a change, okay? <laughs> yeah, I was proud of myself. I remember Vice President Wind flesh. Okay. <laughs> Under discussion anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if there is uh, no discussion, roll call, please. Cut. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Mon Excuse me? Aye. <laughs> Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Falk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10 21 45 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2041, resolution number 193-1011 by Alderman Hammond, creating a TIF Standing Joint Review Board. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd ask that resolution 20-41, uh, creating a TIF Standing Joint Review Board be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, President Kittleson, I know you got caught off guard I here did. because. Thank uh, you. Can you do a little explanation? Alderman Hammond is not here. Right. Uh, what this does, because of uh, uh, what, we, what, what the city has done in the past, um, is uh, uh, every time that uh, work was done on a TIF, an amendment or a creation, um, we had to establish another board. What this does is have a continuous board because of the. Uh, development efforts that we have going on in the city right now that we don't have to go through a month or a month and a half delay every time to call another board. This continues the same board. Okay, so this is a good thing. I thought it was a good we thing. Thought, okay. I hope you guys <laughs> do too. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Sir. Thank you, President mm -hmm. Kittles. Yes. Under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 13 ayes. <clears throat> resolution passes 2042, resolution number 194 1011 by Alder Persons, Boren, Heidemann, Hammond, Decker, and Versi, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into agreement with Visusur for the change order number three Western Interceptor Project for additional costs of equipment leasing during the permitting delay due to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Alderman Heidemann. 
I make a motion that 2042 be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. I'd like to call uh, Director Bittner to the podium. Bill. This has to do with the uh, big black sewer pipe along Washington Avenue, in case anybody doesn't know. So. Bill. Uh, this is a $78,000 change order, which, which sounds is a lot of, of dollars. It's a change order to a major rehabilitation of one of our interceptor sewers, which is really a sewer that runs all the way from the treatment plant, actually down a, a, a corridor, not necessarily Washington Avenue, but eventually crosses the freeway on Washington Avenue and ser serves much of our city and many of our cities to the west. The project was a $2.6 million project and has been let actually before the first of the year in 2009 for completion in 2010. Uh, one of the issues was getting the bypass piping. Many of you are familiar with all the piping on Washington Avenue and all the little uh, roadways people had to go over that was really to dry the sewer pump above ground in the piping so be able to completely rehab the sewer system. When we looked at going through the highway, we were met with uh, some resistance from the DOT on how and when we could do that and what would be the best way to do it and really wound up with many months of negotiation before getting a permit. One of the issues was where they thought we could actually put a small pipe through their storm drainage. Another issue was for several months before the PGA golf tournament, they didn't want any work done on the roadway. And all of a sudden we got several months of delay, which is now being finished now. The change order is really for the cost incurred by the contractor because we couldn't give them a permit to proceed with the work. It involves mostly equipment rental. There's huge pumping equipment, there's piping, et cetera, that had to go there from fall till uh, this spring. Uh, the details were reviewed by our consulting engineer and, and made sure that uh, it was all about additional cost, cost the contractor. I, any questions, I guess? Thank you, Bill. Uh, Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Since the additional cost of 78000 is due to the uh, delay by the state, why isn't the state paying for this? Well, the, the state, whether you consider them reasonable or not, they were, were in their rights to deny us a permit uh, and will we'll argue that they acted rationally. We would argue different, but there's, it, we were getting a permit to cross their right-of-way. We needed that permit for the contractor to proceed and uh, it took us several months to get that permit, but I don't think you're going to get any um, you're going to get any dollars back from the state because they're going to argue that they were in their own rights to do what they did and deny us the permit until we Be came to an agreement. Because I've received a number of phone calls on this project, even though it isn't in my district, and they wonder what's been holding this up. And I, I know I talked with you and you said this will be done by the first of the year and some other problems came up, which is probably this one. Uh, so now we have a $2,600,000 project, another 78,000 due to the state of Wisconsin ineptness. And we have to bear it. Uh, of course, the contractor has the additional costs and he's passing it on to us, yes. which uh, is understandable. So, uh, I, I don't see any other way out of this outside of, you know, appealing to the state, which will probably turn around, but this thing should have been done uh, a good six months ago. And that, that is about the timeline that we lost in, in right. attempting to get a, a permit. Our goal was to always have it done um, by the end of the right. construction season in 2010. So we have two things here. We're not really at fault. The contractor's not at fault, but we have the state of Wisconsin, which essentially is at fault for this. The, the, the delay, and now we have the additional cost based on us. I, I think the DOT would, would argue. Yeah, well, I'm uh, sure they would. Completely differently. Right. We are, they are within their authority to uh, put uh, requirements on right. their permit, and we live with that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alderman Sampson? Yep. 
I'm sorry. Bill, you might want to hang out for a while. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess as part of the planning process of this, part of the plan was ahead of time that we were crossing over the interstate. So there were, we already, there, I'm sure we were already aware that we had to obtain permits. Why were permits never obtained prior to starting work or getting closer well, to that? For, first of all, the project was done because the sewer in question we were felt was, was in danger of imminent failure. So that project was, was sped up. In the process, we obtained right-of-way permits from the power company, we obtained right-of-way permits from the railroad, and we needed right-of-way permits from the Department of Transportation. The reasonable assumption was that the transportation of the three of those would be considerably easier to work with because they work with utilities um, uh, routinely and regularly, and we routinely and regularly have a process you get the permit with. That process did not happen in the timely manner that we expected it to. But yes, you're right, those permits weren't in place before the bid was let. That's, that's pretty typical that you look for processes that happen regularly and routinely to happen in that routine manner. In this case, it didn't. Is there any process to budget in slight excesses? Because that's a $78,000 assumption. The, the project was budgeted at 2.9 billion million, excuse me. The, uh, the, 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 bid, the bids came in at about two, six and a half. So we're still well within the budget amount, our estimate of the cost of the project. Okay, so, the, when, you, so when you're explaining $78,000 more, there's already an extra amount of yes. budgeted money that was right. already there. So we're still not going over budget, technically. Is that? Right, and, the, and this, this comes out of the uh, uh, wastewater fund, correct? Bill? Yes. Yeah, and this is also partially funded by the outlying communities that take advantage of this interceptor sewer. Um, I, I can recall I was on Public Works a couple years back, uh, and we had a, a, a really yes. neat video of this interceptor sewer, and it showed the interceptor sewer with uh, stuff running from the outside into the sewer, literally waterfalls coming into the sewer. Uh, which is why this process was sped up, because if this sewer would have collapsed being a main interceptor sewer, you literally would have had entire s towns and sections of the city without sewer. So that's why this process was sped up. Bill? Uh, on the funding, this project is being built by contract between four of our, uh, ourselves and three of our neighbors. The city is bill or paying about 45% of the cost. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Racer? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongeman? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. 2146. In RO by the purchasing agent submitting bids and listing of other expenses for the remodeling of vacant space on the first floor of City Hall to accommodate the City Clerk's Office and Finance Department's Payment Center will be referred to Finance. 2147 will also be referred to Finance. Uh, other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 2149 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Larry Whitig requesting a two-year extension on the sump pump hookup to the storm sewer. That will be referred to, if you have just a moment please, Public Works. 2150 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a claim from AFNI Insurance Services representing Roger and Sandra Rup Ruppel for alleged damages to their windshield due to rocks coming out of a mulching machine. Will be referred to risk management. 2151 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Jim Young stating that he is upset about the treatment he received from the supervisor of plowing during the snowstorm. Referred to public works. 2152 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. Referred to Vice President Rinfleisch and Law and Licensing. <laughs> 2153 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Michael Tico for the towing and storage of his vehicle. Referred to risk management. 2154 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Michael Tico 
for alleged damages to his vehicle when a snowplow did a U-turn in front of him. Also referred to risk management. And that is all for other matters. Um, we will now be going into closed session. Uh, we will be uh, uh, turning off the television cameras. Um, we, and we will not uh, be back on the air this evening, just so everybody knows. Um, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption contained in section 19.851E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating the purchasing of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. And under the exemption contained in section 19.851G Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is involved, namely Holloway versus Sivmic and City of Sheboygan, case number 09CV1606. Second. We have a motion and a second to convene in, to convene in closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, we need a roll call on closed session, excuse me. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. <laughs> and Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Okay, we are going into closed session. Uh, we'll, we will have a five minute recess in order to uh, have, make sure the cameras are shut down. And...